Hey folks, Phil Gallier here for another daily Monster Train run. Uh, this time we're doing a custom challenge from user Fine and Andy with three mutators. Permadeath, any non-champion unit which dies is purged from your deck. Seeing double, when the first friendly unit is summoned each turn, create a copy. And Yeetpocalypse, must purge a card after every battle. <clears throat> Notably here, the copy that is summoned for seeing double is spawned behind the original copy. So if the one in front dies, you lose that unit. Um, let's go ahead and jump in there and see how this goes. We are playing Stygian Awoken with what I consider to be a quite bad starting deck. Um, so in this first fight, we kind of have three do-nothing spells, and Sharpen goes on, like, a Brain Steward for this first floor. Um, I'm kind of nervous that, like, we lose on Sharpen 1. Never mind. Okay, any non-champion unit. Never mind, I'm not worried at all about Circle 1 anymore. I was like, what if we lose the champion right away? No, it's fine. So we can we can lose the champion in Circle 1, and it's totally fine. Save that. Um, guess this does some things. That frost by 40 in two turn cycles is really good. Okay, so our starting deck just got way better now that we get the opportunity to build to take either Crypt Builder or Titan's Tooth to have something to discard with Offering Token. A Stygian Banner and Merchant of Steel, followed probably by Artifact and Awoken Banner. I think I like Titan's Tooth better than Crypt Builder. Ah, uh, maybe that's not true. Like, Titan's Tooth is better against the Double Barrel Daedalus fight. But this is going to be better at, like, actually keeping units alive as the run goes later and later. I'll take this to be better at the Double Barrel fight. Death is super awkward. Like, I would like a tank that scales, theoretically. So I would really like an Imcant Siren, for example. I 
mean, I probably need to take this. Hold on, do I have two train stewards to start with? Rather than the normal number? Kind of interesting if that's the case. Oh no, I, I, I killed them! I killed my train stewards! Right, okay. That's what's up. Wait, plus 10? the siren I'm looking for. I don't think I want a second Titan Sentry since they duplicate. For overfilling floors, I have like restoring retreats. I absolutely need to go to the Merchant of Steel next before I missed on good upgrades for my shark. The question is, like, do I take a Nameless Siren? I don't think I do. I think I want to, like, try to fish for a Thorn Hollow next floor or something like that. Get two of those on the same floor. But I think I will this. Like, this or can be very dangerous when you're playing Tethys because like you have spikes and to deal with a good portion of the time. Speaking of I think I can still do this. Requires me drawing this trip builder to be easy. Let's go towards trying to make the trip builder work. By doing this. First friendly unit. Awkward. Okay. One more train steward. Like double train steward in front of Tethys, and I would like to just purge this unit. have been shattered. Alright. Let's, let's see what we can do. Double up on that. 31. Mighty rude. Let's try to keep this from dying. 
I uh, maybe should have drawn through that frozen lance. Second crypt builder. Deck's gonna get pretty small. I think I'm okay with second crypt builder. Like very consistently discard those. We're not good at shooting barrels. Kind of a problem. Of anything like March of Shields to cheat. Fine Grasp would be pretty good for this deck. Keep the Thorn Hollow Dream alive. Also, maybe keep the Sharks alive. So after each fight, it's like we're getting a free card remove. So like, we're getting a bunch of side value. I want to look at my banner. Oh wait, I said I needed to go to the Merchant of Steel, didn't I? I missed out on this upgrade slot. Oops. Um, I don't think I reasonably get to keep either of these things alive as of right now. You are much late. We'll take a tempered talisman. I think we can uh, I think we can afford to bleed a little bit here. I don't think we're going to take much fire damage in this fight, like we might take a little bit. Double tap this single guard. Set up top floor so rage dissipates as much as possible. And so that I can use spells on lower floors. Do it now. Heal for five does nothing, heal for four does nothing, heal for three does something. Also turns on restores to stack. This is better the second pass through the deck, but I think I'm still just gonna do it anyway. for things like no things like this are just gonna die yeah I don't know how essential sharpen actually is just make sure the shark doesn't die and we probably can be fatalist as long as I can kill the barrels that appear yeah you can come up and then take 10 20 yeah 50 plus 53, some odd damage. Yeah, that's good. Just nuke that. All good. See, this is this is the sort of thing I don't want to see. What's this? Is it a frozen lance? It's a glimmer. That's the same effect as of what I'm looking for. So we go discard, kill that. Glimmer, kill those things. Time to destroy the train steward. That can happen basically at any time. Maybe let's make sure we don't accidentally lose the fight. Be good with playing you. Feels like we're good with playing you. Now we've gained the opportunity to remove those train stewards for very little cost. 
to ourselves. I just assumed you were dying, right? Yeah. Five, six, seven. All right, good stuff, and the shark didn't die. I don't think we're taking gifts for a guard. Warcrossed Effigy is interesting. As, like, we have Frostbite Tethys plus Titan Sentry. I don't know how we're dealing with big units here. I guess it's Crypt Builder. Like, that's the plan. Also, are probably taking Ember because the fell that we're facing and the fact that we have double crit builders. Yes, I'm gonna take this. Okay, these are these are what I'm looking for. The so which one? One of these things needs to, like, kind of be by itself. If I take this Siren, and I take Capacity after the next boss fight, I can potentially go, like, turn one, double Tethys, plus one of the things that cost two spots into turn two, play the second one, and get two copies of it. I only have one bonus restore card for Thorn Hollow, but my deck is going to be small, so I can stack Rejuvenate on it just about every turn. I think trying to take capacity after the next fight and, like, go on this plan is pretty reasonable. Now, is the two-cost thing worse than Frozen Lance? Unclear. Probably. Probably. Like, spell spam matters, even though I do go up an ember. So, this floor is slightly awkward because I don't have the option to go to a Merchant of Steel to upgrade the Siren that I just got. Harder moves are also in kind of a weird spot. is kind of interesting. I don't know if it's better than 10 gold. Like, specifically because of permadeath, like, I am going to kill this unit, so it makes a fight easier. I think I'm just going to take the long-term strength. gonna do a really focused thing and hopefully that really focused thing is good. I don't know if things are good enough as of right now. Alright, um... Boss reduction goes on this because it's very important to play multiple times for bosses, I think.
Double stack that. Easier to keep the sharks alive. I don't know that we actually go for plus 20 on any of these things. Like, probably removing this and a sharpen and maybe one or two restores over the course of the rest of the run. So I don't know that this is as good as it normally is. And since the deck's going to be so small, I'm actually going to like play cards like this multiple times instead of just like once or twice. We're at a 20 card deck right now. I think I'm going to reroll and not Surge Stone. Plus 10 magic power goes on Glimmer. I don't know that I freeze stone or frost effigy. I think one of these cheaper. Um, we have found the sweep. I think we will go ahead and take. just like let the frostbite from this kill everything except one core. Got a bottom with double tethys. We're getting 20 frostbite. It's gonna take about 40 more damage. I don't need to ask these restores and make my life harder. I think you're just gonna kill yourself as is if I don't mess with you. Siren this fight doesn't seem necessary. Right? I might need to hit you with the spell. But I think I don't want to accidentally lose this unit before I upgrade it. We're good. Let's murder that thing. I guess we do that. how possible it is to actually win without using that many units. Admittedly, like, we have double Tathos, which is dumb, so, like, that contributes some of that, but... Something to keep in mind. Okay, great, and we do this without actually losing our shark once again. Which is great, because I don't know what we do if we lose that shark. Lose is the current plan. We lose if that shark goes down. Facial seal? Am I building more than one floor? This is the one with the power away. One spreadsheet. Sorry. Right. 
fight eight seraph clun seraph so we have one two three fire wings in that fight that i have to answer somehow drain is a way to do that otherwise i don't currently have an answer to those i can survive one Fire wing hit, but I need to answer the others or heal Tethys in between. Let's take a drain. I'm interested. I'm interested. Restoring retreat to overfill floors and actually just using it as a heal 13. Like, totally read. Awake provides meaningful amount of regen for this Titan Sentry. That is going to have to do a lot of work. Take the awake. I sharpen? Okay. Have a focused game plan. I don't know that the game plan is objectively strong enough. So. Okay. Plus 25 life on Titan Sentry. It is a beast. Multi strike on the siren. It will become very strong. I don't think I want plus 10 attack. I think I want HP on this unit. I think I'm going to roll the shot. And. That's a large stone, which is super awkward. Plan was take capacity after the next boss fight so that I could. So I could play Tethys, Tethys, one shark into Siren, Siren, and Large Stone throws that out. That doesn't work anymore. That's unfortunate. So now, what's better? Two Large Stone Sirens or one Large Stone? Siren, where everything's on the same floor. It might just be that I take large stone and set up two separate floors. And just, like, try my absolute best to not lose anything. But, like, these are amazing raw stats. I think I go for this. If I do this, then it means that, like, I have two strong floors instead of one strong floor, so I think that's fine. I think I'm going to a Merchant of Magic and getting an artifact next floor. I do want to duplicate this Wildwood Sap at some point in this run, though. That's maybe here. Eh. Here, try to spend money here. Alright, one circle at a time. We're we're probably done here. I could go this way, take fire remains and element. Just save up some money. Offer some life. Oh. Neat. Options are still flexible. floor, followed by Siren's mid-floor. 
does this probably pretty easily because there's a whole bunch of frostbite on these things. I think I can do this. those in the same turn, huh? So in order to get to 100 realistically, I probably need to play the Sirens. Oh, this is a... Uh... Duplicate Siren's top floor. I think that's the play. Hmm. Maybe that's not true. Because now I have to win the fight on the second floor or I lose the shark. Oh, that's really awkward. Hmm. Does Tethys plus Titan Sentry beat this boss without either one of these being duplicated? Do not want to lose this Titan Sentry. if I play Titan Sentry and then don't play Tethys? God, it's so awkward when I draw both of these at the same time. I'm gonna... I'm going to try to win this fight without using these other units. I, I think I'm I think I'm good. I think I'm not gonna get distracted. I think I'm just going to keep stacking up. I restore values here. So I can choose to just play multiple Tethys as non-champion. I can do this without any real cost to me. But I think I'm just going to keep doing that. We're fine. We're fine. 
Shoutouts to Awake for doing some, like, serious heavy lifting this fight. Now that makes it just, like, insane to go to a Merchant of Steel on floor 7. I'll absolutely pick this up. Absolutely. A Guardian's Amulet is a fine pickup, I think. We have two Offering Tokens to discard them. pick up and unleash the wildwood oh i don't know preserved thorns though is real good on that super encamp floor assuming that that happens that's a lot of scaling the first time i have that card but unleash the wildwood is just like so good at helping to keep my initial it's alive before I'm set up and before I've like wildwood sapped and such. Tricky, 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 tricky. Either one of these is an amazing pickup for the deck. Preserved Thorns is four spells in one. So that's eight attack, which is really 16 damage. And a good chunk of HP as well. Preserved Thorns really better than Unleash the Wildwood? Maybe. We are starting to get to the point where I'm running low on cards that I actively want to remove. We only need to remove more. So it'll be unnamed Tome, not this fight, but the following fight. And maybe this fight I just take something to remove it. I think I'm good with most of my cards. So this is dead. I'm not doing that. Question is, is it better to duplicate this Wildwood Sap? Or is it better to go to the Merchant of Steel and like look for double stack for this or cost reduction for this? I think I'm gonna try Merchant of Steel. I'll take the random silence, I think. From across to do anything interesting. Not particular. Draw our deck pretty quickly. Go. Lost magic power on one of these doors. Make the awake chamber. Roll. Who consume and cost plus one? Not necessarily what I was going for, but I think I'm good with that. So plus ten magic power on another restore. What's the path look like? Try to finish Merchant of Steel upgrades here. I don't know, like, Merchant of Steel upgrades here so I can also Hellvent is really good, so that means I can Merchant of Magic again next floor. If I get Holdover, I'd probably Holdover Awake. 
So maybe let's just make this glimmer free sort of thing I would always want to cast. Alright, um, let's see how this goes. Hopefully we don't draw both of our units on turn one again. That probably makes the fight easier. So how do I want to set up? Plan on win with double Tethys Titan Sentry, I think. Now, Siren, if this is the floor that I'm going to win on, the Sirens should go above. I think I do this now. I think I do this up here, actually. Yeah, in case that happens. Because I want to transfer all of this frostbite here. This regen would just go away anyway, so let's put that one there. I don't, I don't like some of what's happening here with these things. The things that are happening, I need to start building regen on this shark if I'm going to win here. I'd like to be able to kill some of these absolvers on the bottom floors, but I don't think that happens immediately. Kill off the sirens in case something like this slips through at some point. That's fine. Alright. So, double stack that. Glimmer. Kill that Absolver. Amber. Stack this up. Rain you. Maybe killing you in process. No, but we sapped you a lot. Next, the next floor is totally fine and good. I'm casually doing so much damage to Fel, just by the way, Fel has 91 Frostbite already. So, let's just do that. 194 Frostbite. And make sure the Shark Stick stays alive. Game well played, Phil. Yeah, I think you're effectively dead now. Let's do that. Scale up the sirens with these. Hammer here. Awkward use of spell weakness. Uh, that's probably fine. That I get more hits on Fel. Should be darn close to killing Fel in the flying stage.
yeah, we're, uh, we're very good here. Bell gets to make one attack. Ah, JK. Bell attacks and dies to Frostbite. No, no thought required. No units dying. The Awoken Rail Spike in a small deck has such a huge impact. I think I can get away with not taking Ice and Fire because of how good that is. got like good cards that I want to keep in my deck. I could also remove a base level restore. The thing about keeping this is that I can use it on the next boss if we end up with Living Armor. I can make the fight way easier and reduce the chances that I actually use the unit during that fight. Let's remove one base level restore. Upgraded. Alright, so the plan was Merchant of Magic and Gold Pile, and then go this way to take uh, something defensive with this Merchant of Spell. I want Higher Frostbite 1. Hold over. I have insane holdover choices. Offering token, guardian's amulet, amulet, or frost effigy, awake, dream. All very good options. I kind of want the holdover on something that is going to make it so that the pyre wings don't kill my Tethys. That makes me think it's drain. Drain also enables crypt builders. And Guardian's Amulet. Like, I just don't want my Tethys to die. That's very important. Like, I need to keep the, the Shark and Tethys alive. So. The other thing I could do is just, like, take hold over Guardian's Amulet and then reduce its cost. That might be better. <laughs> Try that. Plus 20 magic power and consume. I don't think that's an upgrade we're looking for. Now do I roll the store? I don't think I roll the store. So what would be like really good? Double stack on awake is insane. I mean, you gotta call the shots for them to happen, right? Um, if I remove two restores now that I just double stacked that card, I have this non consuming Wildwood Sap plus Awake, or yeah, maybe I do. Um, this is not in the plan. I think I remove these two base level restores and then remove unnamed, unnamed Tome after this fight. All right. I'm hoping that I can take this trial. Okay. Glimmer bails me out of this handily. Throwing the shark on turn one bails me out of this handily. Preserved thorns bails me out of this.
see if we can make this work. I get the siren. Okay, so we go... Double tap this shark, offerings totem, kill one of these. Not gonna play the siren on this floor. So all of these are now going to die to Frostbite. I'm willing to take this much fire damage. Would be 20 fire damage. I can just, like, call, call this trial a success. I think I am willing to do that. Totem into Crypt Builder here. I can Glimmer here. And now, just do everything. I don't need this card immediately. I guess I can drain first. They're just upside for doing that. Yeah, I don't I don't want to get ever trained. Regen six, regen ten, regen ten. So you are effectively dead already. Let's go. surprisingly complicated because if I crit build no I don't really need additional damage do I that's not important so we can offering totem tap everything oh well that simplifies things a lot actually now I just cast that and it gets everything and it dies cool cool that means that I can do this and this unit is dead next turn. You know what? Just cuz. Just cuz. Yeah, I'm done. I don't think we need the sirens to win. Dang Wildwood Sap. Would like to cast this. I wonder if this Awoken Rail spike is just, like, not happening in this fight, because it's so important to stop these. Do I have an offering? No. That's okay. I am, uh, not too worried about it, obviously. Oh, 
that's what I'm talking about. So one of my personal rules is when the red X is here, you just stop. You don't play any more cards. So like, even though we have the silence, ah, you already got silence as well. I don't even need to talk about my law. Get wrecked. Also, did I not kill that fire wings? Is that just gonna go to the fire if I didn't kill on this floor? Frenzied Swarm is very good in my deck. Very good. Because it lets me play these like crit builders, guardians, amulets for free. Every time. Absolutely. Focus growth. I don't know if I need that card draw. I think I'm just going to skip this. And I remove the unnamed tome from my deck. Alright, good stuff. some upgrades. Be about this. Cuddlebeard! Alright. So we don't think, we just like click on Cuddlebeard. That is a stupid, stupid artifact. And now we'll spend the rest of our gold somehow. Here? <clears throat> Assuming that I hide behind the shark. Or here, so that the sirens are easier to keep alive. I guess in this fight, my dream world is really, like, use Titan Sentry to kill some small stuff, and then have, like, double siren on the Tethys floor. I think that's the dream. But maybe I should do this. Like, obviously, like, whatever happens on turn one, happens on turn one. Well, for another plus 25 HP. I don't think Endless works the way that I want it to. Monster, Train, Purge, Endless. Thank you, Reddit. What do you have for me? What happens? All units had permadeath, but Endless bypassed permadeath. Okay, it will bypass permadeath for one fight. Which is what I need. And then we're full. And then we're full. I wonder if I take, like, another Titan Sentry. Now that it's endless. That I can actually have multiple floors worth of stuff. That seems good, then I'm just like not always getting sapped on my primary floor. Wherever that ends up being. Yeah, we're poor. Do I want to remove anything? That seems good. I can remove the unupgraded Crypt Builder if I want. I can remove 
upgraded restore if I want. We're drawing almost the entire deck every turn. Brain and Frenzied Swarm together is kind of awkward. Yeah, maybe I remove Drain. Ah. Eh. Maybe I don't. I can see removing Drain. I can s actually I could remove an offering token now that I have like Drain and Frenzied Swarm. Let's remove one of those. I think we're pretty likely to win this fight. I would put us at 80% or above. Alright. Didn't want to draw these two in the same hand. I'm gonna play a Titan Sentry on bottom. I think I take one Tethys and double Siren. Oh no, I can't do that, can I? Oh, that's awkward. If I play double Siren here, that overfills the floor, and I can't put Tethys behind. That's incredibly awkward. I could try to hold on until the second pass through of the deck somehow. Or I could just say, like, through it, take double siren and play Tethys on bottom. And plan on. I don't know. Tethys on. The shark. Ah! I don't know. I probably want to set up a double siren situation. And if the Titan Sentry dies, so be it. Maybe I play Tethys top, though. And then the next Titan Sentry goes on top, and there's two of those in front of Tethys. I think I like that. Alright. I have worked it out. I think I'm just doing this. This one I'm a little bit less sure about, like whether or not I play this down here or up here. I think I still play it up here. I don't know. Like, I can reduce the amount of damage that I take by quite a bit by playing it down here. The weird one. Alright, so things that have to happen. Yes, let's start there. This is all fine and good with me. I think I like this. Possible I'm supposed to just spell, spell spam the middle floor this turn, though. Also possible I should just, like, spike and try to hit Awake and Horfrost Effigy early. 
Very good with this shark dying, so I can replay it next turn. Instead, I can glimmer here. I would like to keep my holdover card. That weakness. Do I scale or do I hit Seraph? I think I try to scale. Alright, so that's the starting point. And we go to here. Do this. Do this. We do that. Now. We start doing the thing. Looks good. We let one unit go up a floor, but I'm not particularly worried about that. Yeah, endless with these copies is kind of dumb. I'm not going to lie to you. Save the health on that unit. Build this up. Let's continue to do that. And I'm good with this. Like, these units getting hit as many times as possible builds frostbite. Let's just daze to this. Yeah, I don't even know that we are, like, really going to need Tethys. Like, I know Tethys is adding, like, hip damage here and there, but... This is disgusting. taking any damage on this floor. I don't want to hit you. Anything that I do matter? No? Feels sort of like no. Eight damage. for the shark. What a shame. What a shame. Okay. I could maybe be just like sapping Sarah, but again, I don't think it matters much because this Rather ridiculous. Yeah, so almost 500 frostbite here, just casually. Get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya. Little beard is really good. Really, really good. like to take a brief moment of silence for the train stewards who were purged along the way for your service. All right, uh, so we ended up taking all of the trials over the course of this challenge. We ended up with a very small focused deck um, and some very strong units. 
the ability to repeatedly play like Wildwood Sap and Awake, so I just did not have to worry about my unit wrong. Uh, the things that probably contributed most to my success in this one, um, honestly, was probably just being picky at the beginning and not taking subpar units. Like in these sorts of challenges where your units are duplicated and where you're potentially losing them, you want to really value getting the highest caliber cards that you can because their impact and loss is like so, so meaningful. Um, very happy with how this deck turned out. We pivoted a couple of times in terms of what we wanted to be doing. So like originally we had this idea of taking capacity to really overfill a floor and then things changed when we pick up, picked up the large stone for the sirens. Um, but like very good fight and I think we had multiple ways of winning the Seraph fight. So we didn't really use Tethys there. The Endless pickup on Titan Sentry to kind of like break the rules of the challenge um, also was quite strong. Although, again, I think even without Endless on the Titan Sentry, we don't have that much trouble winning this fight. Uh, anyway, um, that was an awesome custom challenge. I enjoyed that one a lot. Fine and Andy, thank you very much for the donation for this one. I'll look forward to the next one. And for anyone else looking to bribe me to try out a specific challenge, details are below the YouTube video. Have a great rest of the day.